All right, part two of my spooky little Halloween tutorial. This is the model we created in part one. Pretty decent looking. We're going to set it up now for some very simple bones and then some cloth simulation, and that's where this model is really going to come to life because it is very plain right now, but uh, lots of folds and uh, fluid motions can make it look really cool. So we created our selection set in the first part of this tutorial. There it is. And we are, we've set our weights, we've got some points, and now we're going to add some skeletons. So go ahead and set up, create skeletons. Now, as I set these up, I'm going to mention to you that because I'm using Windows Media Encoder to record this, it won't let me rename the skeletons in the skeleton tree, which is weird, but it's the way things are. So uh, you're going to have to figure that part out for yourself, because I can't show you that. Mirror these, Shift-V, Numeric. All right, you can see that the uh, first bones I put in there were the right. So when I go to the skeleton tree, the first two I met you see here are going to be the first two bones you created. So this is going to be the right upper arm and the right lower arm, left upper arm, left lower arm. So I'm going to rename those real quick, but I have to pause the recording. All right, magic of editing. You can see that I've renamed them right upper arm, right forearm, left upper arm, left forearm. Okay, I can create two more skeletons. Create skeleton. Get a nice, big, fat body bone here. Drag this up to where you want the neck to rotate. We're doing this really simply. If you want to do more complicated, feel free. And then a head bone. All right, go back into your skeleton tree and rename those. Again, magic of editing, body, head, and all the appropriate names. So, save this. I'm going to do an incremental save. Shift S. I'm going to send the object over into layout. All right, here we are in layout. Um, the familiar light wave feature, you can call it, where things facing front in modeler are facing backwards in layout. Not that I'm bitter. All right, go under setup, add, convert skeletons to bones. Six bones were created. I have my bone x around so you can see them here. We don't need any fancy weights associated. It's working just fine. But we do want to parent these uh, upper arms to the body. So first go into your options and make very sure parent in place is on. And then just parent those into the body. M for motion properties if you've never done this before. You can now see if you move the body, all the bones move appropriately. So, and you can also see we've got a weird alignment of the axes here. So I'm going to go under uh, modify, orientation, uh, record pivot uh, rotation, which will just pop those into the appropriate you know, alignment. Um, but it disabled IK to do that, so just re-enable IK and spin this around 180. So now we're facing into the scene. Move the camera to a slightly more dynamic shot. All right, so what we've got here is our ghost rigged and ready to rock, at least as far as bones go. But we haven't done any cloth yet, and that's really where this model shines, so let's get to that. I'm going to drop in some very quick uh, animation on these bones. Don't judge me as an animator for the work I'm doing right now. It's just for the purposes of this tutorial. Some spooky motions there. Give it lots of motion, because we are going to be using cloth. And uh, the more motion you've got, the more cool follow-through you'll have and all that jazz. Get another bit of animation on frame 60. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the graph editor. I'm going to select uh, object, which will bring up all the bones at once. Select all of those. Select all the points. I'm going to set the tension to 1. This is just for my test animation, so we can get our work done. Set the offset, uh, the post behavior to oscillate. It'll just keep repeating the same animation and set this out to about 200. We're going to want to see that cloth behave. So now the silly little ghost dance. All right, good time to save the scene since we're about to get into adding dynamics. Ghost underscore V001. Very original. All right, with the ghost selected, go to the properties panel. 
Dynamics, add dynamic, add cloth. Double click to bring up the properties. Start with the etc. tab. Set your gravity to negative 9.87 meters. That's earth gravity. You're going to want to mess with this later. And then uh, set your preset to silk. It's a good place to start. And uh, go to basic and choose fix, fixed point set. That's the point set we created in the first part of the tutorial. Okay. And bring this off the screen here so that you can see what's going to happen. But I'm going to hit calculate. So. Already you can see the model completely comes to life and it already looks much spookier and more interesting than the original model would ever have implied it capable of looking. All right, I'm going to stop this so you don't have to sit through all of that. You get the idea. Um, bring the object properties back here. Geometry, set this to last. Smooth your model out and uh, render more quickly. Lots of benefits to doing that. Calculate again. See how much more quickly that did. It's treating the cloth. It's only working with the original points, but it's smoothing it out to give you all that nice uh, motion. Right, I know some of you are thinking it looked much more dynamic with all the other subdivisions. That's true. If you like that idea, I would suggest instead of doing it in the uh, geometry tab, setting your subdivisions higher, go back into Modeler and subdivide it one more time. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I wanted to render or calculate quickly, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, other things you might want to seriously consider is going back into Modeler and flipping your polygon so that all the outside faces are facing inside. It really doesn't matter because it's uh, double-sided under properties. And then under cloth effects, choose uh, collision, all, self-collision, all, double-sided, none. And then it'll calculate much more slowly now, but the cloth will theoretically not um, intersect with itself. I like to set my collision offset up considerably higher when doing this kind of thing. In my case, I'm going to go for one and a half inches. Um, it's a ghost. Accuracy doesn't matter all that much. Calculate it up. I didn't flip the polygon, so there may be some unpleasant intersections still happening. But that's the basic idea for your spooky ghost animation. All right, in the next part, we're going to talk about some really slick, very quick ways to texture this to get some really cool results and then put it all together. Uh, there you go.